An architect makes detailed plans long before a single worker picks up tools to start building. A surgeon studies the patient's x-rays and MRIs before touching the scalpel. It is just as important for us in the networking business to carefully plan changes to the networks we are responsible for. Hello, I'm Joe Robertson with Juniper Networks. Welcome to the second in a series of videos about the networking life cycle. Our first video was an overview of Juniper Network's life cycle approach, plan, build, operate, and how it is integral to the success of network projects. This video will briefly explore the plan phase in more depth. Regardless of the size of your project, planning is crucial to its success. Obviously, no one would install a network of hundreds or thousands of devices by simply ordering them online and having them shipped to your doorstep. A lot of planning would go into such a project. Many projects are much smaller than that, however, and it is very easy to skip over some key planning steps. Don't. For a small project, it is worth taking the time to reflect on a few key points and even for large projects, it is amazing how easy it is to forget some of them. So here are the crucial points to remember for the plan phase of any project. Where are you going? Where are you now? And how are you going to get from where you are to where you want to be? Sounds simple, doesn't it? And it all seems obvious. But as with so many things, the devil is in the details. Before going very far on any project, large or small, be sure you and all stakeholders are clear on your goals and that you agree on them. Put them in writing in lots of detail. This may all seem obvious, but have you ever heard the expression mission creep? It's when the objectives keep moving. Someone adds a requirement and another and another. Or a manager points out that they thought the project would include other items. We cannot always avoid changes midstream, but mission creep can mean that earlier decisions are no longer the right ones. Undoing those decisions, however, is rarely easy for reasons ranging from budget impact to simple stubbornness. We are all human after all. Just keep in mind that the best defense against mission creep is to start from the beginning with a well-defined, written project goal, plus thorough stakeholder agreement. So let's say you know what the goal is. Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone to the supermarket and said, oh, I need some of that, whatever it is, only to get home to find you already had three packages of it? When this happens on a technology project, the budget implications are much greater than for your shopping list. Hence, the need to spend the time assessing what you already have. Although this can avoid unnecessary purchases, more importantly, it defines for you the baseline you are starting from for your project. A good assessment will not only tell you what you have, but who is using it the criticality of the existing functions, and typically it will develop customized roadmaps you need to schedule and prioritize technology enhancements. Which actually leads us to the third point. How do you get there from here? The first two steps gave us the end points. Now we need to fill in the route. A big part of this, of course, will be choosing the actual products to be used. That choice should be based on having developed a high-level design that clearly establishes the technical requirements. And once chosen, the detailed low-level designs need to be put in place. In addition, the planning phase is also where you need to define the steps to migrate to the new environment with the least disruption. How you unplug the old and plug in the new, so to speak, without leaving your users unplugged. So when you think about what is involved in the plan phase, you see there are a lot of different skills involved. Of course, the size of the project will impact the time you spend and the resources you need for planning, 
but it will not affect the need to closely evaluate all three, where you are, where you are going, and how you're going to get there. At Juniper Networks, our experience has been that for projects of any size, there are few organizations that have all of these skills in-house. And even when they do, those resources may be occupied on other projects. Outside consultants can be a very cost-effective way of taking up the slack. Bring in the right skills at the right time and only for as long as they are needed. Beyond specific technical skills, a consultant can also provide you with an external perspective, for example, on gaps in your existing capabilities, the state of the art in the technologies you're looking at, or, having worked with numerous clients similar to you, new ideas on how technology might address your business issues. Now, in the case of Juniper Networks, our professional services consultants can provide you with a wide range of planning services. Assessments, design, risk management, as well as a rich project management methodology that is geared specifically to the complex networking and security environments that are our specialty. Going back to the networking life cycle, I hope that this brief focus on the plan phase has helped clarify not the importance of planning, you certainly were already aware of that, but the really crucial points that the planning process must cover. Those are sometimes easy to overlook. One further point. Across the entire life cycle, Juniper Networks has offerings designed to help you in all your networking and security projects. Professional services, support services, education. Our goal is your success. I hope you have found this video useful. My next video will focus in more detail on the build phase of the life cycle. I hope you will join me.